You'll need faith to make it a reality. Faith Moments brought to you by Patrick Penny Ministries would give you insight that would guarantee your victory over the forces of poverty, sickness and disease. It will enable you stand in the midst of opposition. And now, Reverend Patrick Quayne. Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, blessed day. I think that's the ultimate, blessed day to you watching us, wherever you're watching us, you are blessed to be part of this broadcast this morning. I'm sure you're wondering, who is this? Well, <laughs> the one such said, and now Reverend Patrick Quayne, but then you are seeing a female Someone you've not seen before, right? Well, that's how God works. <laughs> and say amen to that. My name is Joyce. I'm Joyce. Uh, call me Joyce anytime, anywhere. And uh, I'll gladly respond. And so today, I am sitting in the big hot seat. Yeah, the seat that our pastor has been sitting in and has been teaching us everything we need to know about the gospel of Christ. That is what this ministry is all about. We pointing you to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. It's not about anything other than Jesus. And so we thank him. Now, before we start, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you so much for this opportunity, for this day. This is the day you have made we will rejoice and be glad in it. I pray anybody watching us now, whether they are weak, may they say they are strong. Where they lack, may they say they have. Because of what you, Lord, what you, Jesus, you have done. Thank you. May your Holy Spirit lead us as we enter into your word. He's the one who will teach us all things. He is the one who knows the deep things about God. And so, Holy Spirit, take over. Let this message reach every nook and cranny. Let it reach every corner of this world. Let it touch souls. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Grab your Bible because that's what all this ministry is all about. We use the hashtag, Own Your Bible. Yeah, you have to have your Bible so you can underline important verses that the Holy Spirit directs you to. And so I said, you may be wondering, who is Joyce? Well, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm the second in command in this ministry. Glory be to God. I have uh, done news for many part of my life as a broadcaster. But this morning, I, I just told the Holy Spirit, I've presented the news for so many years. But this morning, Holy Spirit, I want to be a presenter of the good news. Yes, a presenter of the good news. That's what uh, we are being asked to go and do in Matthew 28, 19. For that reason, it's not about who we are or what we are or what we've done. It's about what Jesus says we should do. We should go out and make disciples and teach them what we have learned. Teach them what Jesus has thought us. Thank you, Jesus. And... Uh, Without much ado, I want us to look at the title of today's message. It says, Eternal Life is Jesus, or Jesus is Eternal Life. Now, if you've been on this uh, platform or been with this ministry for a long time, uh, you may have heard so many times uh, the teachings about uh, the new covenant, the old covenant, the law, and all that. And uh, I'm still staying in that same arena. And I thank the man of God for giving me the opportunity to be here this morning with you. And I hope together with the leading of the Holy Spirit, we can be a blessing to each other. All right. So we are going to use our Bible. So grab your Bible, grab your notepad and your pens. If you are at work, if you are at work, just listening and then later you can play back and then you can 
take down all necessary notes. I salute all of you watching me on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube, and also on our website, patrickwenuministries.com. On this ministry, we say, in all that I get in, get understanding. Now, you may have also heard so many times that uh, when you receive wrong, which a lot of us, I mean, including me, we received wrong, we believed wrong, we acted wrong, but thanks be to Jesus Christ, who is the truth. He says, you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So we've been set free. Glory be to God. But uh, when I read uh, Galatians 3, 1, and I want us to go there. Galatians, we are, we are talking about eternal life because that is what is in the New Testament. And I think from the past uh, days, uh, Pastor has been teaching us a lot about eternal life. And the fact that if you believe in Jesus, you have eternal life. But if you don't believe, the wrath of God comes upon us. Now, here... Brother Paul was speaking to believers. I just, this, this is not the message or the, the scripture we are using today, but I just want us to look at something here. Brother Paul said, Oh, you foolish and thoughtless and superficial Galatians. These were believers, but for whatever reason that they made Paul come on them so harshly to use the word foolish, thoughtless, and superficial Galatians, who have bewitched you that you would act like this, to whom right before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified in the gospel message. This is all I want to ask of, your, of you. This is all I want to ask of you. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as the result of obeying the requirements of the law, or was it the result of hearing the message of salvation and with faith believing it? These Galatians had had right. They had had the good news. They even have received the Holy Spirit as a result of their faith. But they had gone back thinking that it had to be their works. They have to do. They have to do. They have to do. And that is where some believers are. Even after receiving the good news, even after receiving right, even after receiving the gospel of truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, what I call the, the, it's too good, it's too good to be true syndrome. You know, you, you think that, no, 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 no. I'm so used to doing that now I'm told Jesus has done it all for me and all I have to do is believe. So you believe for some time, but then, uh, 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 no, this is not it. I have to do from the beginning of the year to the last day, 365. I must do, I must eat 21 apples, I must eat 50 uh, 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 grapes, I must chew some nuts, I must do, you know, it's like doing, I must do, I must do, I must do, and all you're doing is doing and doing and doing. And you know, when it comes to doing, it's mostly about you. It's mostly about you. So you realize that the year comes to an end and you haven't won a soul for, for God. You haven't shared Jesus Christ with anybody. But the, the thing is, when we receive Jesus and we come to know him, we have to share him. We don't keep him to ourselves. But you are so concentrated on doing and doing and doing all about you. I must be at this conference. I must be at this all night. I must be part of this fasting. I must be part of this prayer. And it's all, I'm a, I need a breakthrough and I'm here and I'm there. It's all about you. So believe this. Yeah, because in Galatians, Paul is speaking to believers. They have received right, they have received the Holy Spirit, but they come to a place and it's like, it's never enough. I need to do, I need to do, I need to do. So let us look at somebody who wanted to do, and that is our scripture for the day. That is in Matthew, Matthew 19, Matthew chapter 19. We are going to look at from verse 16, the story about the rich young ruler. The story about the rich young ruler. I, I often say, um, when you hear a story, especially the stories in the Bible, uh, which have all been put there for our edification, for our learning, for our teaching and all that, uh, and you are hearing it again, 
Oh, never say, oh, I've heard the story so many times, you know, because uh, it will surprise you that uh, the Holy Spirit will always reveal something new to you. Anytime I read the story, the Holy Spirit reveals something new to me. You see, and uh, that is what uh, we call in journalism, angle, the, the same issue, but it's tackled from different perspectives. Okay, so we're going to look at the rich young ruler and we're going to link it to eternal life. So at the end of the day, we're going to know what eternal life is and how some people are going about looking for eternal life with what to do. The to do people, I have to do. All right, so let's look at the scripture. And someone came to him. So we are in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. I'm using the amplified version. And it says, and someone came to him uh, and said, teacher, what essentially good thing shall I do to obtain eternal life? That is eternal salvation in the Messiah's kingdom. Jesus answered, why are you asking me about what is essentially good? There is only one who is essentially good. But if you wish to enter into eternal life, keep the commandment. Keep the commandment. He said to Jesus, which commandment? And Jesus answered, you shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. That is, and selfishly seek the best or higher good for others. The young man said to him, I have kept all these things from my youth. What do I still lack? Hmm. Jesus answered him, if you wish to be perfect, that is, have the spiritual maturity that, is, that accompanies godly character with no moral or ethical deficiencies, Go and sell what you have and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. And come follow me, becoming my disciple. Believing, I want you to underline believing. Believing and trusting in me and walking the same path of life that I walk. But when the young man heard this, he left grieving. I want you to underline he left grieving and distressed. He left grieving and distressed, for he owned much property and had many possessions, which he treasured more than his relationship with God. I want you to underline relationship with God. Now, this story, again, the title, I, I don't know which version of the Bible you're using, but mine has the title, The Rich Young Ruler. Okay, so... This is somebody who is rich, he is young, he is a ruler, he has authority. And you know how oftentimes we tout those who have achieved success, especially when they are young. So this guy, we can say, is a successful person. He is rich, he is young, he is in a place of authority. That is where we all want to be, isn't it? where we meet at our various churches, at our various gatherings, at our various conferences, and they describe us with all those titles, you know, we love it. But I'm here to tell you that, you see, you can have all those titles and you can be rich and you can be successful, but then you will not know some basic things about the kingdom of God you will not know some basic things that pertain to your life as far as God is concerned. So this man comes to Jesus. And then he comes to Jesus and says, Good master, what can I do to obtain eternal life? Remember, the title of this message is Jesus Christ is eternal life. So he comes and he's asking, What can I do to obtain eternal life? Now, this is a period you know, Jesus himself was born into the law. I think that has been established so many times on this platform, that Jesus himself was born into the law. So Jesus himself was going by the law. And that is why the Bible says nobody could fulfill the law but him. Okay, so during this time and many other instances you see in Matthew, Mark, Luke, 
especially, you find out that anytime somebody comes to Jesus and asks him a question, he will refer the person to the law because that is the law. The law is what you abide by. The law is what you live by. And then you know in Deuteronomy 28, when you go by all the law, you get the blessings. And when you don't obey the law, the curses also follow you. So this guy comes and is looking for eternal life. Now, this is where I want us to take a critical look at it. This guy says he has obeyed all the law. He claims. He, he alone, no witness from anybody. He says he has done it all. He says he has done it all. But what I want to know is, as he's obeying the law, he doesn't know that obedience to the law brings eternal life. No. Eternal life is not clear. It's not made clear in the law. It's not made clear in the law. Blessings, yes. Curses, yes. But eternal life. So this guy claims he's done it all. But he's still looking for eternal life. Wow. And so Jesus has no choice but to refer this guy to the law. And you know the Ten Commandments, five of it, which has to do with obeying God and keeping the Sabbath and all that, is all summarized into love God with all your heart. And then the other five, which has to do with uh, being good to your neighbor, not taking your neighbor's uh, wife or not uh, being uh, jealous about what your neighbor possesses and all that as listed here, also is summarized as love your neighbor as yourself. So these two make up the Ten Commandments, which beyond that, we have a, about more than 600, you know, articles, sub-articles under it, which all comes up into 600. So this guy says he has done it all. So if you've done it all, why are you still looking for eternal life? If you follow the law, you will go around still looking for eternal life. Because you know the truth. The truth is you cannot even obey all the law. You cannot. And we learn in the same Bible that when you break one of the law, it's, it's, it's as well as you've broken all. So we cannot fulfill the law except Jesus. So Jesus says, okay, if you said you've done it all, now you still lack something. Okay, then go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor. That is translated as love your neighbor as yourself. This guy said he's done it all. So he, Jesus said, okay, you've done it all. That's fine. Go and sell all the things you have and give it to the poor. And then come and follow me. That is love God. But then he gets disappointed. He wants to do. He comes to Jesus and says, what must I do? What thing shall I do? He wants to do. And when he's told what to do, he gets disappointed. He gets disappointed. Bible says he left grieving and distressed. You want to do. So you, you are all over the place. You are looking for something to do. You are calling this pastor. You are calling this prophet. You want to do. And when they tell you what to do, you become disappointed. Because, you know, you want to do, but what you are told to do does not meet your expectation. Oh, you thought the pastor was going to lay their hands on you and pray for you. Sorry, they told you go and do 40 days fasting. And now you are disappointed. You are like, how can I go and do 40 days fasting? Well, you want to do. But you see, when it comes to eternal life, there's nothing like doing. And I'll prove that to you. This guy says in 22 says, but when the young man heard this, he left grieving and distressed. For he owned much property and had many possessions, which he treasured more than his relationship with God. He left. He left. He left eternal life. The guy is rich. He's young. He's a ruler. Commands authority. But you see, he missed the revelation that Jesus Christ himself 
his eternal life. He wanted to do. But Jesus gave him the opportunity. He said, go and sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven and come follow me. This is where the eternal life comes in. Come follow me. Becoming my disciple, believing and trusting in me and walking the same path of life as I walk. But he missed it because he wants to do. Because he wants to do. You know, excuse me, pick this. Sorry about that. Because he wants to do. He walked away from the source of eternal life. He walked away from the giver of eternal life, which is Jesus Christ himself. Okay, now let me show you what the Bible says about Jesus Christ being the eternal life. Come to 1 John 5.20. Open your Bible to 1 John 5.20. First John 5, verse 20. And as always, we encourage you, take your time and read the whole chapter so that you can have a better understanding, okay? Take your time and read the whole chapter. But for the purpose of time, I'm just moving to the verses that I need to uh, make myself clear. Thank you. And so it says, and we have seen, Okay, let me start from verse 19. We know for a fact that we are of God and the whole world around us lies in the power of the evil one opposing God and his precepts. Okay, uh, that's not relevant. And we have seen and know by personal experience that the Son of God has actually come to this world and has given us understanding and insight so that we may progressively and personally underline personally, personally know him who is true and we are in him who is true and his son Jesus Christ this is the true God and eternal life Jesus is the true God and eternal life so this rich young ruler walks away unhappy angry sad looking for eternal life bible doesn't tell us where he went from from here but bible tells us he came to jesus to look for eternal life and he met eternal life but he missed it he wanted to do he met eternal life the source of eternal life the giver of eternal life first john 5 20 this is the true god and eternal life Now, John 3, 16, so we, fa we fast track, that was the law, so we, let's fast track to the new covenant. After Jesus Christ has come to die and resurrected, that marked the beginning of the new covenant, where we don't have to do the law, which the people at that time could not even obey. Therefore, Christ became the, 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 the one who redeemed us from the law. Bible says he has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So he knows that, you know what? Many years from now, after this young ruler has left me, my people will go around looking for eternal life. So I'm going to lay down my life for them. I'm going to take the, 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 the guilt, the penalty they have to pay for their sins. I'm going to take it. I'm going to nail it all, including all the law and all the do's, do's, do's. I'm going to nail it all to the cross. And when he resurrected, he said, listen, my daughter, my son, all you have to do is believe, is believe, is believe. You are going around looking for what should I do? What must I do? Jesus says, all you have to do is believe. Because he doesn't want a repetition of the rich young ruler's incident. Jesus Christ, thank you. Come to John 3, 16. 
Thank you, Jesus. If you are being blessed, please share this message, okay? If you are being blessed, we are, we, today I'm presenting the good news. That's all I'm doing. Thank you, Jesus. Come to John 3, 16. Very famous, uh, but some people don't know it. You may be listening to us for the first time. You may not have given your life to Jesus. Look, you are the reason why Jesus Christ came to die. It's not about professions. It's not about somebody with a title. It's not about how many riches or money you have. It's not about how successful you are. It's about what Jesus Christ has done for you. And you are the reason why I don't know what you are going through. Listen, I don't know what people have told you. I don't know how much they have condemned you. But there is an opportunity. There is a new life where when you get into it, there is no more condemnation. And we are going to get to that. But let's look at John 3.16. Now let's start from um, verse 14. Let's start from verse 14. Again, please, when you have time, the, the whole chapter 3 says the new birth, okay? So that is where we are getting to for those who have not given their life to Jesus. It's a new birth, okay? So uh, verse 14, John chapter 3, verse 14 says, Just as Moses lifted up the bronze serpent in the desert on a pole, so must the Son of Man be lifted up on the cross. So that, pay attention to verse 15, so that whoever believes, Underline believes. In fact, if you have a marker, highlight it. So that whoever believes, whoever believes will in him, will in him have eternal life. Underline eternal life. After physical death and will actually live forever. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten son, that whoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish, but have eternal life. It is instant. It is present continuous. It is not after you are dead. No. It is. It happens just that, you know, a lot of the times when we heard about eternal life, the first thing that came to our mind was, oh, when we die. No. Not when we are dead and gone. No right here on this earth, right here in your home, in your office, <laughs> with your husband, with your wife, with your children, with your family, you go in holiday, in, that's fine, but you have eternal life. Once you believe, what Jesus has, God has done it. He has already sent his son. He's not going to send him again. You see, uh, the songwriter says, I need no argument. I need no proof. Well, maybe you need a proof. You want to see that, yes, like, you know, I want to see. Well, I don't need it. I just believe that Jesus Christ came and walked on the face of this earth. He lived, a, he was a human being. He was born through Mary. In actual fact, he was born into the law. He, the, the parents applied all the laws when he was born. And he himself, when you ask him a question, he refers you to the law. But he has brought eternal life. So you are saved. And once you are saved, you also have eternal life. It's instant. It is now, now, now. What, I mean, what if, it, 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 I mean, what if you don't even die? We have eternal life. It is now. It is now. It is now. Now, you may wonder, oh, so what is eternal life? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That even reconfirms that he is eternal life. And that rich young ruler missed it. He walked away from him. He walked away from him. He walked away from him. Now let's look at um, John 17, 3 to see what is eternal life. John 17, 3. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. You know, let, let me let me uh, start from verse 1. Okay, but the emphasis is on verse 3. When Jesus had spoken these things, he raised his eyes to heaven in prayer and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that your son may glorify you. Just as you have given him power and authority over all mankind, now glorify him so that he may give eternal life. 
underline it so that he may give eternal life to all whom you have given him to be his permanently and forever permanently and forever <laughs> somebody doesn't want me to share this word you know they are disturbing around but okay I, I even if i he says <laughs> even if i have to shout on top of my voice i'll do that he says that that he may give eternal life to all whom you have given him to be his. This is Jesus praying. This is Jesus praying. And then verse 3 says, Now, and here's where I want you to pay attention. Now, this is eternal life. Now, this is eternal life. That they may know you. And only true, supreme, and sovereign God. And in the same manner, know Jesus as the Christ whom you sent. You know, as a product of, 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 of this ministry, I think at this point, I can say, let's, let's go get some, 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 I think it's cold. So not ice cream, but, but some hot coffee, you know. This is eternal life. Underline it. Now, this is eternal life. That they may know you. This is Jesus praying. That they may know you. The only true supreme and sovereign God. And in the same manner know Jesus. As the Christ whom you have sent. That is eternal life. Now, do you know him? Or you know of him? Do you know him? Or you know of him? Meanwhile, eternal life is a free gift. Eternal life is a free gift. Let's look at Romans 3.23. Let's look at Romans 3.23. Let's look at Romans 3.23. What I usually do is when I like a scripture, I just fold, fold that page. <laughs> Let's look at Romans 3.23. Let, let me start from 22. The, this righteousness of God comes through faith in Jesus Christ for all those Jew or Gentile who believe, who believe and trust in him and acknowledge him as God's son. There's no distraction or there's no distinction. Since all have sinned and continually fall short of the glory of God, this was the reason why Jesus Christ came. And you know that from the beginning, Adam sinned and because of that, there was a break between Adam and God. Okay? And so God wanted to reconcile us back to him. In Colossians, God wanted to reconcile us back to him. So he sent his son, Jesus Christ. Others had come before Jesus Christ, but they, they did bits and pieces. Jesus Christ came and did everything, the whole world. So after Jesus has come and are being justified, declared free of the guilt of sin, you and I, because we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, we are being justified, declared free of the guilt of sin, made acceptable to God and granted eternal life as a gift. I wanted to uh, let you know that eternal life is a gift. If it is a gift, what is this young, rich ruler going about asking, what must I do? It is a gift, a free gift, the best gift the best gift. You know, the other time somebody was asking, uh, uh, so uh, what, what, what are the promises in the in the new covenant? Because I know the promises in the old covenant, we say is when you do this, then God will bless you. And when you do that, and God will bless you. Uh, and I just said, it's eternal life. Just that, that is more than anything. It, it, it has everything that pertains to God in godliness it has everything your life your every your marriage everything is in it isn't it because the opposite of eternal life is eternal condemnation it's eternal death you are living you know but because you haven't accepted jesus you are dead it's, it's just as eternal life is instant it's the same way when you haven't accepted jesus christ you are living dead you are just living a uh, living dead is the truth that will set you free. Is the truth that will give you life. Is Jesus Christ that will give you life. 
And this young, rich ruler walked away from Jesus Christ. He blew it. He missed the revelation. He missed it. He saw Jesus Christ as a, a carpenter's son. And that is where sometimes we get it wrong. Oh, yeah. Is he not there? Is she not there? Yeah. But let the Holy Spirit open your eyes to see more than what you know in the physical. It is a free gift. A free gift. It's, you don't pay for it. You don't work for it. All you have to do is believe. All you have to do is believe. And John 17, 3 says that they may know God. Now, know God and know Jesus Christ. Hmm. Oh, do you know, uh, um, do you know Jane? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know Jane. Oh, I attend the same church with her. Oh, I attend the same school with her. No, 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 no. Not that kind of knowing. Not that kind of... You realize that when we go back to Matthew 19, it made reference to this guy uh, loved the things he have more than a relationship with God. More than a relationship with God. <laughs> that is what it is. That is what it is. A relationship with God. Personal. Not by courtesy of anybody. Not because you are associated to some archbishop or you are associated to some reverend or you are associated to some pastor or you are associated to some mommy or you are associated to some daddy. No, a personal relationship with God. So I asked, if you have a free gift, if you have an office, you are at home and someone brought you, the delivery man brought you uh, a gift. Wouldn't you be curious to know who sent this gift? I'm sure. You, you will be fidgeting, you will, you will be looking for a number. You, you are like, who sent this? You find the address. If there's a phone number, you will want to call. If there's no phone number, you will quickly want to write back using the return address. Find out what, what, what because the, the gift is also branded with your name. That is how eternal life is. It's, we, we, it's us. Okay? So it's your gift. There's no doubt about it. You wouldn't say, oh, it ended up at the wrong address. No, it is your name. It is a branded gift. Are you not going to be curious to know who is this uh, source of the gift? That is what Jesus Christ is talking about in John 17, 3. That we may know him. So, so it's not enough to say, I gave my life to Jesus. And then you see, you know what? I am too busy. So I packed it somewhere. After all, didn't they say it's about heaven and, earth, uh, and hell? No. No. It's about reconciling us back to God. Because God wants to have a relationship with us. It's about saying that I, I, I know him. Not that I know of him. Not that I know him through my pastor. Not that I know him through my father. Not that I know him through my mother. No, but I know him. I know him. And he can also say of you, yes, I know you. Not that you stand in front of him one day and he will say, get out from me. I do not know you. Well, he said it. Jesus said it. He said, they will say, oh, uh, I did miracles in your name. I did this. I, he said, well, the, the grace was there. Oh, as for my name, everybody was using it. So you too, you were using it. In fact, you were doing wrong, but you were still getting right. Well, that's the mercy of God. But to know him, for him to say, I know you. I know you. I think one of the bold statements Jesus Christ said, or made while here on earth, was to say that, my sheep know my voice. They hear my voice. Where, where is that? I think, uh, that, let's look at John chapter 10. Let's look at John chapter 10. Let's look at John chapter 10 verse 27. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Great. Let's start from verse 26. That if you read this, you realize that these were people who were with Jesus and they were doubting and they were asking questions and all that. So Jesus made it plain to them. He says, let me start from verse 26. John chapter 9. Oh no, John chapter 10. John chapter 10 verse 26. He says, but you do not believe me. 
It's about belief. He says, but you do not believe me. So you do not trust and follow me. <laughs> because you are not my sheep. The sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. I think this is one of the bold statements Jesus made here on earth. Woo! Are you one of these sheep? Hmm. Do you hear his voice? Ah, what this means is we are all at the same advantage of hearing the voice of God, of hearing the voice of Jesus. You don't have to go to somebody for somebody to tell you what they hear, they heard. Oh, what shall I do? What can I do? Oh, uh, pastor, so have you not heard anything from God concerning me? Ah, 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 ah. This is a bold statement Jesus made. He said, my sheep, my. Are you one of them, my sheep? Are you one? Do you have eternal life? Eternal life is knowing God and knowing Jesus. Now, how can you, you know, know somebody, you know, know somebody, but you don't even trust the person? Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Don't, haven't you heard so many times they say a, a, a relationship wouldn't even work when there's no trust? Yeah, how can, how can we be together? We say we have a relationship, but we don't trust each other. And that is what it's all about. Believe, faith. Faith in what? Look, Jesus nailed it all on the cross. And he says it is finished. And all you have to do is believe. But no, you want to do like the Galatians. They want to do. No, 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 no. It, it's too good to be true. No, no, no. I, I, I can't. No, it's not enough. It's never enough. It's never enough. I got to use my, my strength, my ability. Oh, I got to do it. It's not about quantity. Eternal life is about quality. The quality relationship you have with God. Do you hear his voice when he speaks? You want to hear his voice? Get into your Bible. Get into your Bible. He's going to speak something to you today. You have never tried it. Try it today. Get into his word. You've got to read the Bible yourself. It's not about posts, quotes, and, and, and motivational quotes people put on, 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 what, uh, on, on Facebook. No. Without any reference to a Bible verse. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word is God. All shall pass away by the word of God. Get it from the word. That is it. That is what you can you can say. You know what? Like your daughter will come to you or your son will come to you and say, Mommy, you said when I finish my homework, you will buy me toffees. You will get me candies. You will buy me ice cream. It's the same way you have to pick the word of God and tell God, God, you said this and this and that. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. is knowing him. Knowing him is not being all over the place. And You see, you, you are lost in the everybody syndrome. You are lost in it. Oh, everybody is going here. Oh, everybody is... Everybody. No, 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 no. It's about... Uh, you know what? I, I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Wow. He died for me. A shameful death. Because of that, I've been reconciled back to God. Because of that today, in the old covenant, in the law, they could not call God Father. They had to go to God through Moses. They were scared of God. But today God says, you can call me Father. You want somebody to call Daddy? It's God. It's God. And he says, you know what? You don't need to go through anybody to come to me. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. All you need is just go through Jesus and come to me. Nobody goes to the Father except through me. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Yet still, religion and wrong teachings is misleading you. It keeps you going around and asking, what can I do? What shall I do? What must I do? And they make it look like without them, you have no access to God. It's a lie. You can go to God and obtain mercy. 
that, 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 that veil has been taken off. It's been taken off. Eternal life is a personal relationship with God. Listen, a personal relationship that comes to a place where if you have not spoken to God the whole day, you don't even feel comfortable. It's not about uh, we are doing this number of prayers and you are part of it. You are part of it and you don't even understand what is going on. Oh, the masses. Oh, they are doing it. Oh, so you see, Sunday after Sunday is only when you talk to God. When, when the pastor is bored and he says, you know what, this Sunday we are not having any service. Oh, you, have, you are on leave with God because your actions are based on what somebody is always telling you. No. No, God. And, and you know the good thing? The presence of the Holy Spirit. Who is here? After Jesus has saved you and given you eternal life, you have the Holy Spirit. You want somebody to teach you, it's the Holy Spirit. You can hear him. He speaks to us. He talks to us. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let, let's look at 2 Corinthians 3, 4. Thank you, Jesus. If you are being blessed, just share. You know, sharing is caring. Just share. Somebody somewhere needs this message. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 4. Mm -hmm. That is why you need to be under the new covenant. The old, you got to follow the law. The law, you can't follow it all. Oh, we have followed it all. Oh, my goodness. I am very, very spiritual, you know. I, I, I don't play with my, I, I love my neighbor. Ah, uh ah. -uh. When you were sitting there, your neighbor was passing. And that thought went through your mind, you know. You were even looking at their shoe and you were looking at them some way. <laughs> Jesus said that you have already, you have already gone short of, 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 of the law. You are so angry. You came home and, and, and your, 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 your daughter, your son or your house helpers had done something and you are so angry. Oh, you see, you got angry, but suddenly you came to yourself and said, oh, I don't have to be angry. Well, you got angry. Jesus said it's the same as committing murder. So you see, we don't need the do's. We need the done. And the done is in Jesus Christ. He's done it. He's done it. He's done it. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. Because of what he has done, I wake up in the morning. I don't have money, but I say I am rich. I feel weakness in my body, but I say I am strong. Because Jesus got it all. He's got it all. He's got it all. And I value this relationship. I value this relationship. Eternal life is relationship with God. It's relationship. And relationship is personal. Now, before we read this, let me ask you, those who are married. If you are married, give me a shout out. Those who are married, listen. Can you tell me why you and your husband, you love each other so much? Can you tell me why you are in a relationship in the first place? Oh, it's because I cook so much for my husband. Okay. What about the day that you're not able to cook? What happens? The relationship refuses to exist. Oh, uh, the man will say, oh, I am in this relationship because I'm able to provide everything for my... What about the day? You know, life and uncertainties. What about the day you got to work and you were fired and there's no money to provide? Should your wife leave you because your relationship was based on do's? I, I am washing my husband's clothes every day so he likes me, so I'm in a relationship with him. No. In the midst of nothing, a true relationship will stand. So you are not, I mean, you believe God has done it all for you. You haven't even received what you've been praying about, what you've been expecting God for. But you say, you know what? I want to know God more and more. The more I know him, the more I want to know him. The more you know him, the more you want to know him. And you are getting into his word every time. When you hear the word, it's good. But you pick your Bible and you, you look at the verses. It doesn't correspond with what the person was saying. You want to know God more and more. And you give to him because you know him. Because you have a relationship with him. Not because someone is manipulating you. Or not because somebody is saying, if you give, yes, they do. Do and so, oh, I, I'm, I'm sure if this, if this rich young ruler was told, oh, go and give an offering. 
he would have quickly done that. Oh, go and pay tight. Of course, 10% of his riches means nothing. He would have done it. I'm sure if he was, he was told, oh, go and fast, he would have easily done it. But you see, he had to go by the law. And he was found wanting. He was found once, and I think that the, the, the time pastor preached about this very verse, he said, the guy is a liar. Well, he said he's done it all. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 3, 4. If God deliver us from that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He says, such is the confidence and steadfast reliance and absolute trust that we have through Christ towards God. Absolute trust. I said, you cannot be in a relationship with somebody you don't trust the person. You don't trust the person to take care of you from the, uh, the, the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. You don't, you don't, you don't, no, no, no. It's not about what you are doing. It's about absolute trust. And I want you to underline the confidence and steadfast reliance. Underline all that and absolute trust. Absolute, absolute, you know, absolute. There's no but. If, when, how, mm, mm, mm. there's nothing like that. What, where, no, 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 no. Can you, can you tell me how that, no, absolute trust, confidence, 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 confidence that <laughs> they see you and they say you are, you are too known, but you know what? You know what you are standing on. You know who you have. You know who you have. Listen, wrong teachings. That gets you, what should I do? What should I do? At a, at a, at a point, I, I, thought, I thought everything that I was, was based on what I was doing. Yes. Yes. I thought everything, you, you know, I, I, I kept my tight heart so close to my heart because I was like, I pay, I pay my tight. God, you see that I am so faithful in my tight. I'm doing, I'm doing. I even give thanksgiving offering and all that. And, the, and so anything that happens to me, I link it because I did. Ooh, that there came a time that I could not do. Hmm. I was so hard up. I spent all my money. I didn't pay that. And then trouble started coming. And you know, I had been taught. I had been taught. I'm sharing this with you. I had been taught. I still have those notes. Oh, I have them in the church that I was. I had been taught that if you don't pay tight. Eh, 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 let me tell you. They say if you don't pay tight, God leaves you and the devil comes into your space. You know, and they use Malachi 3 and he says, if you pay your tithes, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So you see, when the trouble started coming, instead of me taking my time and finding God, no, 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 no. I was busy looking for the cause of the trouble. I was look, busy looking for the cause of, what didn't I do? And then, bam, it dropped in my head. You didn't pay your tithes. What? I have defaulted in my tight payment. It's like when you default in your rent, they come and eject you, right? When you default in your in your utilities, they come and cut cut the service, right? I have defaulted in my tight. Mercy. So, but you see, everything is so interesting because just around that time, I'll be paid. I'll be paid. So I quickly took the money. I'm going to clear my arrears so that I can get God to come back into my space and sack the devil. I didn't know that Bible has taught us that God has taught us that resist the devil and will flee. Even if it meant that, all I had to do was resist the devil. But no, I walked around with the fear the devil is with me. He has entered my space. That is why today this, the next hour this, the next minute this, it was all bad news, bad news. I said, boo, I, I can't wait for Sunday to come. I went to do. And you know, pastor says, if you teach a child to be religious, you make them a clever devil. I thought I was clever. I said, you know, I'm also going to even add a Thanksgiving offering. I'm sure that will please God. He will move faster. 
in my mind based on teachings. I quickly went, took an extra copy. I came back the next day, buying another bad news. After I've paid the tithe, I said, God, it, it, it had to do with, 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 with health, medical issues. The doctor says, Joyce, what is going on? I said, doctor, just get things right. But I, I, I have a question to ask my God. I said, God, I have paid a tithe. I am told that when I don't pay my tithe, you will come into my, uh, you will leave my space. You have left me. How, how I was missing it. That God was with me throughout whatever that was happening to me. I miss the love of God. I miss the presence of God because I was too eager to know what did I do wrong. That even after I have done, I'm still getting bad news. Why? You know what? I started getting disappointed in God. Do, works, works, performances will leave you disappointed in God. Never put your hope and your trust on your performances. Absolute trust in Jesus Christ. Many, many months, many years after, I will, the Holy Spirit will help me reflect on this issue. And I saw the love of God from day one. And, and just like Joseph, I saw that God was with me. Everything that was happening. And God was also teaching me. God was teaching me. And I said, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't buy you with my tithe. How much is my tithe? Listen, I, I have even come to a place where I receive, you know, uh, in Ghana, we receive salary at the end of the month. And I came to a place, you know, because I believe so much in what I do to get what I want from God. I came to a place where my salary is cities, but I pay dollars. That is, anytime I get, I get a gift of dollars, I keep it for God. Because to me, that is where my blessings come from. To do. But what about the day that you don't have to do? You don't have, you lack. This guy said, but I still lack one more thing. What are you lacking? You're lacking nothing in Jesus Christ. It's complete. All you need. Let's, let, let, let's look at verse 4 again. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4. Such is the confidence and steadfast reliance and absolute trust. And we have that we have through Christ toward God. Absolute trust. Oh, the weather is so dark. Absolute trust. It's been raining all day. Absolute trust. Ah, they just sent me a bad news. Absolute trust. Absolute trust. It doesn't make sense. Well, absolute trust. Absolute trust. Absolute trust. Absolute trust. Because Jesus himself is eternal life. And as I said, he didn't want a situation where you will also walk away from eternal life. So he got it all and nailed it to the cross. And he said, I've done it. It's finished. All I need you now is believe. Believe and you have eternal life. A free gift. And the eternal life, you know, you will say, I am saved. I am saved. Oh, have you accepted Jesus? Oh, yeah, I've accepted. I've accepted. Past. I've accepted. You see, you've done it. Once you've done it. I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. So I'm saved. But you, you don't say, I had eternal life. No, I have eternal life. Present, continuous, every day, every minute, every second. And that is knowing God. Sweet one watching me, I want you to know God. Don't be like the rich young ruler. He got it all. But he lacked knowledge about basic things about the kingdom of God. Eternal life, free gift. He walked away from Jesus. I don't want you to walk away from Jesus. You may be hearing me. You've never given your life to Jesus Christ. In fact, you don't even know what we are talking about. I present Jesus Christ to you. He came all the way to come and die for you. So that he will set you free from the guilt of sin, from the penalty of sin, which is death. 
oh, so am I not going to die? Well, it is appointed unto man once to die. You will die. But you see, the eternal life is also not just here. It continues after death. That is the hope. That is the faith. That is the trust we have in God. That is, that is what we hold on to believers. And so you are asking, so how do I get there? My sins are so many. What do I do? Uh, uh, uh. It doesn't matter. It may be as black as, as coal. The blood of Jesus can wash it and make it as white as snow. You just have to believe him. Wherever you are, wherever you are, that's the power of this uh, 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 system. Wherever you are, just agree. Just, just come to that place where you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. If you are that one, I want you to say this after me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you very much. I have heard about you for the first time. Thank you very much for what you have come to do for me. I understand that if I believe in you and I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior, then you will come into me and you will give me a new life. Thank you, Jesus. Today, I confess you with my mouth and I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I am a new believer. I am a new creation in you. I am no more in condemnation. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for giving me a second chance in life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, Father, I thank you so much for these ones who have given their life to you. Father, they are yours. You said nobody can snatch them from your hands. You said they are your sheep and they hear your voice. Thank you for the new souls that have been won through this platform. Thank you, Father God. May you strengthen them and Holy Spirit teach them and lead them as to the way to go in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you just give your life to Jesus Christ. It doesn't end here. As I said, it's not something that you get, then you put it on the side and you continue living your life. No, you are a new creature. You are going to live the new life. The new life is in Jesus Christ. All the condemnation, all the things you've done in the past do not matter now. Is that so? Yes, that's the good news. That is the message we are supposed to spread. Not the message that puts fear in people. No, that, not the message that says you have to do. No, it's a message of simplicity, of knowing Jesus Christ. The good news. Believe. Yes, I've believed. I've accepted him. In Revelation 3.20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, if anyone hears me knocking and opens the door for me, I will come into him and he with me and I will sup with him. Other translation says, I will eat with him. That is what you've just done. Jesus was standing at the door of your heart knocking. You have answered. He's entered. He's coming. He's going to be with you. Now, if Christ be in you, who can be against you? Listen, you have confidence. You are bold. Declare it. I am bold. I am new in Christ. That is what Christ does for us. Okay? Now, you need to be baptized in water. You also need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I pray, find uh, a Bible-believing church. That's what this ministry we, we ask you to do. Find a Bible-believing church. That means if you go to a certain church and they are doing something that, uh-uh, just look for another Bible-believing church. Tell the pastor that you've given your life to Jesus Christ on this platform and you want to be baptized. Tell him you also want the gift of the Holy Spirit. It does a whole lot of things. Okay, it, the Holy Spirit will teach you, will, will, will comfort you, will, will, will lead you, will guide you, and will open your eyes to the deep things of God. Okay, so just do that. And then own a Bible. Hashtag own your Bible. But if you don't have a Bible, okay, let us know. We will send you one. Okay, and I personally want to hear from you. Okay, I personally want to hear from you. Write to me, okay, and tell me. Tell me about your experience, your new life. Tell me about it. Write to icfm29 at gmail.com and that mail will come to me. Or you can call. Okay, you can call. The phone number to call is 914-246-2421. Call me anytime and let's have a chat. Okay, again, at this point, I uh, think that I would want uh, to talk about our project or our vision for the year, which is... Uh, uh, Vision 2020, we are asking you to join, okay, so that together we can raise Bibles and give to uh, new converts 
new people who give their life uh, to Jesus. Okay, we want them to have the Bible. No, it's not about what somebody says. Ah ah ah! You got to open the Bible yourself and see. It is written in black and white, bold letters, boldly written. You got to confirm it. It's not enough when you hear. No 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 no. It's not enough when you hear. You must confirm. You must look into the Bible yourself. Okay, for that reason, if you want to send cash up or Zelle, the number is 914-572-9816. Or if you want to do PayPal, it's www.patrickwainoministries.com. That's the website. When you go there, look for the button that says donate. Click on it and follow the instructions. It's easy. It's just instant and you are done. Okay, and the Lord is going to bless you for that. Okay. Uh, today I'm doing everything so okay then let me also quickly take you to Israel those of you who want to join us to Israel I have been there I have been there not because I needed a proof no but because I wanted to experience the places my savior my redeemer has been so I went there and I really really loved it and it was a blessing and I want you to take this opportunity okay it's opportunity of a lifetime Call us on the numbers there, 914-246-2421 and get all the necessary information you need. Start putting aside money. There's a flexible payment term. Call us and get all the details and the gist, okay? And uh, the Lord will bless you. And so I'm already thanking you, you know, I'm already thanking you. I'm thanking you so much for your time and everything, everything, okay? Everything that you've done to be here. Thank you for sharing this message. Thank you for blessing somebody with it. Thank you. Uh, together we made this broadcast successful, okay? Together we made this broadcast successful uh, by the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit done. I, I, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your time so much hopefully hopefully when i get to be in this hot big seat again we would have more conversations about jesus christ if it's not about jesus christ please just just pack <laughs> just pack and go somewhere but if it's about jesus christ embrace it with both hands okay because he is the author and finisher of your faith he gave you salvation salvation is not in any man salvation is not in anything that you do okay thank you so much share this message share it and let it bless somebody and so so i see you again this is faith moment and i am joyce Thank you. Have a blessed week. Have a blessed uh, day and everything. God bless you.